Today I'm doing a tutorial for the, the Gyro Trading app. That's for making investments in shares, futures and options. We're going to take a look at what's required of you, the sign up process to open an account. And then we're going to go into some detail on how to search for a specific company and then how to execute a buy or sell order for shares in that company. If you stick around with me till the end of the video, I'll also give you a quick look at my portfolio. Welcome to Trader UK, where we discuss money management and how to grow your wealth. If you enjoy this content, then like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below. So before I share my screen with you and we take a look closer at the app, there are a few requirements to opening a trading account with the gyro. You need to have a bank account in the EU, Norway or Switzerland. You'll need to register this account with the gyro who will then check your identity using these details. Once they've done that, they'll ask you to make a transfer from that designated account to their the gyro client account. And within two to three days, whatever amount you transfer to them, it's a minimum of one cent that you can transfer, they'll credit that to your trading account. So please allow a few days to open up your account. So once you've activated your account and you have your login details, this is the screen that you'll be greeted by. Along the bottom you'll see the market tab, which is our home screen, favorites, portfolio, activity and search. We're gonna work through these one by one. But if we start from the top of the market tab, top left hand side you have a drop down here which allows you into um, an area where you can deposit or withdraw funds you can revert back to an old platform which I've never used um, and you can invite a friend as well if you invite a friend to the gyro you'll both be credited with 20 pounds worth of transaction funds um, so any trades you make will essentially be for free and then the usual contact us, fee schedule, about us, etc. Let's just go back to the home screen. On the top right hand side, you have your inbox, notices from the gyro. Occasionally I receive messages from the gyro telling me about important bits of news. In the top center you'll find your balance the balance includes any cash that you have in your account plus the value of all your shareholdings bond holdings etc and then today in the negative there quite a bad day for the account um, it tells you your your daily result below that you have two tabs market and news market is your default home screen news uh, for information on stocks, anything uh, in the headlines, any companies that make the headlines will be shown here. Below that you have a quick search, so if you know the name of a bond or an investment fund or of a company, you can type it in here and it will find it for you. And then a list of the different markets from across Europe and the USA. It doesn't detail any Asian markets here, but German markets, Spanish, United States, UK, all shown here with their points value and then their performance for the day. Again, very bad day for all of the markets at the moment. Below that, you can give feedback to DeGiro, you can rate the platform. You've got the winners and losers for the day. You can select whichever market you follow. Mine is a default for the FTSE. Um, you can select your market and it will tell you which companies have done well, which companies have done very badly. They'll be detailed in there. Stocks to watch. If I just show you, if you click on the question mark, sorry. If you click on the question mark it will tell you what that is but essentially it's companies that are in the news having more than average volume or if they're related to an IPO so it will show you there so maybe some things you want to keep an eye on and then at the very bottom currency fluctuations in currency rates and futures Futures, not something I've ever got involved with. Um, you can bet for or against certain markets. Um, you can leverage quite a lot of money, but because you're lever leveraging money, 
it's obviously the opportunity for big losses as well so for beginner traders it's something I would, I would probably steer clear of and again invite a friend at the bottom so that's your home screen the market tab then you've got your favorites tab any stocks bonds futures ETFs I come across that I like the look of or I want to keep an eye on for a later date you can click the blue star and it will log them in this page where you can track their performance so again it will tell you their current value performance for the day up or down in points value and up or down in uh, percentage terms as well you can click on each stock and it will take you through to the the detailed page with the charts and graphs, the pricing data, and options to go and buy or sell from there. Okay, so favorites tab, pretty straightforward. I tend to keep all the companies that I own in here and any companies that I'm keeping an eye on as well. Although the companies that you're keeping an eye on, the companies that you keep an eye on, I probably would have in here. You don't necessarily need to keep the companies that you own in here because as we move on to the next tab, portfolio, it's going to show you those anyway. The portfolio tab, a summary of all the investments that you've made. At the top, it will give you, again, portfolio value which is all of your cash balance plus your port, your investment balance as well, or value. Amount available to trade, only £21 at the moment. And then as you scroll down, you can see your different positions. Let's take a look at, what do we have? Carnival Corp. Carnival Corp here it tells me the stock exchange, the New York Stock Exchange, the value at the moment, 1171, and then I hold 60 shares in that company, which leaves us with a pound value of 572. Just be aware, you know, 60 times 11 is more than 572. That's because the stock is held in a it's, it's floated on the new york stock exchange in dollars and my base currency is pounds so it's converted across there for you it also gives you your gains and losses for the day in percentage terms but pretty straightforward i only hold shares in this account i don't have any bonds or futures etc it's all uh, shareholdings The next tab you'll find is the activity tab. At the moment, it's empty here because I don't have any outstanding orders. If you did place an order for something, it would show in here until it has been executed. Or if you want to go and look at previous orders or completed orders, you can click on history and then you can change the date range. Here we go. And then it will show you your buy order, buy orders and your sell orders that have been completed. At the top, you also have tabs for transactions, account statement, reports, and portfolio depreciation. The main one that you would use from there would be your account statement when you need to submit a tax return or declare any profits or losses this is going to be most useful because it breaks down all the fees all your um, buy orders all your sell orders so that will be your most useful tab last one on the bottom here you have a search function again quick search if you know the name you can click on shares and it'll bring up all of the FTSE 100 you could select the uh, the FTSE 350 if you wanted, whatever you wanted from here. And then it will list them out. Let's use the search function. PepsiCo, this is a stock I don't own. I do have it marked as a favourite already. Um, but as you drill down into any of these stocks, 
you can complete buy or sell orders at the bottom here. So if I wanted to buy shares in PepsiCo, you click on buy and it's going to give you a number of options. First drop down says limit. A limit order allows you to select a price. So it's currently $131. If you wanted to set your price at $130, you could put that amount in here. And I want to buy 10 shares. 1060, oh, that's the amount in pounds. That's why it's not 1300 A day order at the bottom means that the if you submit that order, if you place the order, it will stay valid until it is executed, until the price drops to 130 or until the end of that day, and then it disappears. If you were to change this to GTC, that's good till cancelled. So it will stay active until it's executed or until you remove it. Okay, so that's the first type of order that you can make. The second order type is a market order. You just enter the amount that you want to buy. If you want to buy 10 shares, day order again, same option. If you place that order, it will execute a trade for you at whatever the going rate is. So providing there is someone wanting to sell, which there always is, it's a very liquid market for these big, big shares. Um, you click place order, it will tell you the cost involved with making that order, and then it will execute it for you. So that's the market, you'll just pay the market rate. And the last two options stop loss and stop limit i've never used these beginner traders probably won't be using these but essentially if you if you owned pepsico for example and you select stop loss you could decide that you don't want to keep the shares if they drop below 120 dollars per share so you can put that in here 120 if my 10 shares drop below that i want to sell so if that price drops down to 120 it will execute a sell for you and likewise if you think well if it gets up to 140 then i want to sell you could do a stop limit and enter 140 okay um but again i think you'll mainly be using the first two options the market and the limit orders And then finally, if you use the top left hand corner drop down, you can go and have a look at the fee schedule. The fees with the gyro are pretty low. I haven't had any I haven't had any transaction costs above five dollars or so. Um, if you're trading on the London Stock Exchange, one pound seventy five plus naught point naught one four percent. The US, 50 cent plus 0.004 per share. German market, a little more expensive. And then it's all detailed there. You can have a look as well at the cost of trackers, bond, investment funds, etc. But again, for beginner traders, if you're just looking to invest in a specific company or a number of specific companies, it's going to be this top chart that you'll be looking at. So that's it, a crash course in how to use the, the gyro trading platform. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and subscribe and like the channel.